Hello, this is David of Bionic Turtle. Welcome to the first video for the series of videos devoted to part two of the Financial Risk Manager. And so we start with topic five. Part two candidates are responsible for topics five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And so topic five is devoted to market risk. And this video is 5A, and that's to denote that it's the first of five videos. So we actually have 5A, 5B, 5C, 5D, and 5E. This will publish on March 9th, but we have several methods or means to access the video with a stream or with a download. And also don't forget, you can get the PowerPoint slides directly downloaded in a PDF format all of it unprotected. And so we continue, we start with the sequence of the study guide and two chapters which repeat from prior years from John Hall. Chapter uh, numbers have been updated slightly because he's added some chapters, although the content of volatility, smiles, and exotic options is pretty much identical to the last two editions of John Hall. So we start with the volatility smile. And the first thing about it, I would say, is that we're dealing with not historical volatility, but implied volatility. So the volatility smile is going to be a plot of implied volatility on the y-axis against, we have a few choices here, but our basic choice is going to be a strike price on the x-axis. So depending on the in or out of moneyness of the option, implied volatility, the volatility smile refers to the fact that we observe an implied volatility that is not constant as the moneyness of the option changes. The volatility term structure gets a brief mention here. The only difference is it's going to be implied volatility but plotted over in this case, the x-axis, so that variable is going to be time and maturity. And really, Hull has less uh, less things to say definitively about the volatility term structure, except that we can combine them into a three-dimensional volatility surface. And so, for example, this is a uh, an old uh, implied volatility that I had actually that I had calculated based on actual Google uh, stock options, where we can see the volatility skew in action. And so, that volatility smile refers to the generic fact that it's not constant. And then Hall would say, in equities, we tend to experience or observe the skew, just we tend to, because this is all empirical, and that volatility skew in the case of equities refers to the fact that we historically have experienced or observed higher volatilities over here on the left side where the strike price is low and go diminishing down with lower implied volatilities where the strike price is high. So you can see mine, mine here is basically consistent with, with Hull's uh, stylized volatility skew in the sense that it's high over here and, and then decreasing as the strike price increases. And then mine goes up again with some smile-like characteristics, but his skew point is really that higher implied volatility here, lower here, and maybe continuing to go low here, maybe bending back up. But because it's implied volatility, which is to say it's the volatility that we would input into the option pricing model, like a Black-Scholes, in order to compute a price that, that matches the observed market traded price. So implied volatility is reverse engineered from the observed traded price we require a traded price on the option. So it's really just empirically observed and so it could change over time. There's nothing magical about the contour shape of this implied volatility. But there are now there are some economic theories behind some of it. But just notice in particular an important feature is that we are going to expect the calls and puts with uh, identical features to have identical implied volatility. So over here on the left at low strike price, we really have, as we go over here to the left, deep 